Hey, it's Laura, you are Witch of Wall Street, and I'm so excited to be sharing with you the most transformational books that I have ever read on the topic of money, of course. Now, these aren't just any books, these are the books that have completely shaped my whole financial journey. So whether you're just getting started out or whether you're looking to really deepen your knowledge, these books will be your best companions on that journey. Think of this video as your crash course in financial personal development. After all, they say readers are leaders and I am so excited to share with you my top favorite picks so that you can become the leader of your financial destiny. Now I've picked books on the topic of making money, managing money and manifesting even more money. So I'm so excited to share these with you. So cozy up and let's delve in. So a book I'm sure many of you have heard of, the classic, the cult classic, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. So this book is very much like Marmite. People either say it is the reason they have made millions, vast fortunes in their life, or people really don't like it very much at all. But I'm definitely in the camp of being a big fan of this book. As maybe you can see, has definitely come with me on quite the journey. This was gifted to me back in 2015 by my then mentor, Bob Proctor, who really it was a legend in the whole area of money mindset. And it definitely has changed the way I've looked at money and interact with money since then. Now, there are many different topics that the author Napoleon Hill covers, and it's really based around 13 financial principles or 13 steps to riches as he calls it. Now, it was really tough to try and pick out the three top golden nuggets from this book, but what I came up with is firstly, the power of desire. Napoleon Hill talks about the importance of having a burning desire for whatever you want to achieve in life. The second key learning lesson is all about the importance of faith and persistence because consistency is key to success and we can't be consistent if we begin to doubt ourselves or if we begin to doubt our own success. Now, the third key lesson and the key takeaway from this book being the power of the mastermind. It's one of the reasons that when I first started off in my journey, I became part of so many group coaching programs. Hill talks about when you join forces with other people, you almost create this third mind that you can tap into and benefit from the creativity and the genius that exists. So let me know in the comments if you are a fan, if you love this book, or if this is more like Marmite for you and you are not on Game Napoleon Hill. So another great book on the topic of making money is Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. I'm sure you have come across this book. It is literally celebrating its 25th year, if not more by now, and is a personal finance number one bestseller of all time. This book is very, very famous, very well known by a lot of people. Now, I really enjoyed the learning aspects of this book, but for such a thick book, I thought it could probably be summarized in one chapter. So I'm gonna give you the key takeaways from this book. Firstly is Robert Kiyosaki goes into the importance of understanding assets versus liabilities. Now, as someone who studied finance and became a chartered accountant, I am very familiar with the difference between these concepts, but it was interesting how he applied it to the concept of personal wealth and becoming wealthy in life. And here's what you need to know. The wealthy body by assets. So assets are anything that are income producing, whereas the unwealthy, those who are not wealthy, buy liabilities. So things that are expense producing. So think of it like this way. To build your wealth, we talk about a lot here on this channel about investing, right? You're buying parts of companies, you're buying stocks or funds. These are income producing assets. A lot of people who might perceive being rich as having lots of things, the new house, the new car, all these clothes, they are buying liabilities. These things are costing them. They're not producing income. And this is where Robert Kiyosaki gets into quite the controversial opinion that owning your own home is actually a liability. It's not a step towards wealth. Sure, many people might decide to do it, but it's actually not a financially savvy thing to do. The second key principle Robert Kiyosaki talks about is that entrepreneurship is key. He really emphasizes how his rich dad was the guy that was very entrepreneurial, went out, started businesses. Because again, a business is an asset, it's income producing. And it takes you away from this model of trading your time for money versus being in a job where you are gonna always be trading your time for money. So he really emphasizes obviously the importance of entrepreneurship and building wealth. And again, as an entrepreneur, as someone who definitely focuses on wealth building and wealth creation, I have to agree with him on this one. 
And finally, a really big takeaway by Robert Kiyosaki is that financial education is key. And again, that is a complete pillar, a complete bedrock to the foundation of the Witch of Wall Street. We are big on financial education because I always say, don't invest in what you don't understand. It is the fastest way to lose money. So the more you're able to go out and actually make money work for you to spot opportunities where they exist and ultimately become even more wealthy for you, for those around you, for your family, build generational wealth, whatever it is that you desire to do. So they are my top key takeaways from Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Again, let me know in the comments if you were a fan of this book. Again, I really enjoy the principles, but I thought it could be summarized in a lot less space. Although he's done a really good job with storytelling to make this book engaging and clearly a lot of people agree given that it is a number one of all time in finance. Okay, so they're my top picks on the topic of making money. What do you do when you have that money? So firstly, let's look at a foundational classic, The Richest Man in Babylon by George S. Clayson. Now, I listened to this book on audio and I'd highly recommend you do the same. This book is a really brilliant parable that is very enjoyable to listen to and you almost don't even realize that you're being taught some really key foundational principles around financial management as you're listening to it. Now, the first two of three golden nuggets that I want to share with you are actually principles that I also cover in my financial masterclass and if you're curious about joining that sometime you can check out the link below down in the description. The first one is paying yourself first. Now this is a real fundamental to building wealth and to getting on that journey of actually growing wealth and becoming financially free. What most people do when they receive their income is that they pay their bills, they pay their fun money, they go out, they enjoy their life and whatever is left they then pay themselves meaning they put it into savings or investments if there's anything left. This whole principle is about paying yourself first. You're the most important person in your life. You've got to take care of yourself first. And so setting aside a percentage of your income to pay you, then paying your bills and then seeing what's left over to go out and enjoy life for your freedom fund to put into your fun bucket almost. The second fundamental principle is live below your means. And again, this whole concept is tied to avoiding lifestyle creep. Lifestyle creep is when your income increases and then your expenses increases, then you have to make more money just to keep up with things and so then your expenses continue to increase as your income increases. And so even though one person could be earning double the other, if their expenses are double, they are no more richer, no more wealthier or well off. So avoiding lifestyle creep, avoiding this tendency to want to keep up with the Joneses is so, so, so important. And again, a real fundamental principle that George S. Clayson is talking about in this book, The Richest Man in Babylon. And finally, our author talks about investing wisely, not in just anything that's coming up, especially these days on social media, but investing in what you actually understand. And again, as I mentioned, a big fundamental of what we teach is investing in your financial education first, because it's gonna save you a ton of time and money in the long run. So this is really about putting your money to work for you. They're my key golden nuggets from The Richest Man in Babylon. And again, what I really love about this book is the simplicity of it, how he can break down really complex financial concepts into a very simplistic terms that's very easy to digest. And as I said, quite enjoyable actually to listen to. Okay, so now let's move on to some more modern guides with actionable steps to really build wealth today. And to do that, I wanna introduce you to Money Master the Game by the brilliant Tony Robbins. Now, I have to say I may be slightly biased here because I have been a big fan, a student of Tony Robbins for the longest time. I remember back when I was working in Dublin attending an event of Tony Robbins and it completely transformed the whole trajectory of my career and my finances. I just think this man is brilliant. So what I also love about this book is it's not just Tony sharing his own views on money. Tony admits he's not a financial expert. So instead he went out to some of the best financial experts in the industry on Wall Street, including Ray Dalio, who he once mentored and who was the founder of Bridgewater, one of the biggest hedge funds in the world, a complete genius when it comes to money, finances, 
the financial markets. And he really shared with us the key learnings and concepts that we need to understand, that we need to implement in our own life and our finances to be successful. So here's my top three favorite takeaways from Tony Robbins in Money Mastery the Game. The first one is know your financial freedom number. I actually attended Tony's Wealth Mastery Summit many years ago, and this was something that we had to do from day one, is what is your financial freedom number? We all talk about wanting financial freedom, but how do we know when we get there? What is that number gonna mean for us? So he focuses on setting clear financial goals and then working towards them so that your investments generate enough income for you to live off. And that is ultimately the point of financial freedom where you can sit back, relax, it doesn't matter whether you're working or you make another penny you have enough money being generated from your investments to live happily. You are truly financially free, financially independent. So the second really key principle that Tony talks about in terms of building wealth and managing your wealth is the power of compounding. Now, you've probably heard me talk about this already, but it's such an important lesson. It's such an important concept to really grasp. And it can be a little hard to wrap our minds around this one sometimes because the numbers just become so exponential. But compounding is basically earning interest on interest on your investments. And all you need to know from that is get started as soon as possible because the longer your money has to work for you, the harder it goes to work for you. As I mentioned before, Albert Einstein calls compound interest one of the eighth wonders of the world. It is the wealth engine in your life. So definitely something to take advantage of through investing. And if you wanna know more about investing, you can go ahead and check at the description down below where I've linked another video all about investing for beginners that I know you're gonna love. The third key principle Tony talks about is the power of diversification. This is a really simple concept to grasp and it basically means don't put all your eggs into one basket. So this is ensuring that you are diversified, you have enough exposure to different types of assets and investments so that if something happens over here, for example, if you're invested in the US and something happens in the US economy, you're not 100% exposed to just that risk. You're diversified, right? Or you're not just invested in Nvidia or Meta or Google and something happens to those companies that all of your investments are gone, right? You're diversified across different stocks, asset classes and geographies. It's a really, really important concept on your journey to building wealth. Now, I have to caveat that a lot of people really are a little bit intimidated in tackling Money Master the Game. It's a really hefty book. I personally loved it, but I am a little bit of a finance nerd. So if it does seem a little bit too much, you can also check out, he has another book called Unshakable, which summarizes a lot of the key points in Money Master the Game. And you'll still get about the same gist of things, but just not in the same level of depth, with the same level of research or stories behind it. But it's definitely a good alternative alternative if you want to delve in and learn more, but the size of Money Master the Game might be just a little bit um, intimidating at the start. Now, finally, when it comes to managing your money, I couldn't but share my own book, which is The Witch of Wall Street, which is a step-by-step -step guide to personal finance mastery and confident investing. Now, I poured my heart and soul into this book and my decade plus of experience working in finance, studying finance, becoming a chartered accountant, and personally being an investor myself this book simplifies the entire investment process and I really wanted to give practical step-by-step -step examples literally hold your hand through the entire investing journey so again I will share my top three lessons or my top three key takeaways that you will get from this book when you read it and I'm gonna put a link down below in the description if you're interested in going checking it out this is really perfect for anyone who's new to investing new to building wealth and wants a more simplified approach without all the financial jargon and just something that's really easy to digest and apply so you can start your investing journey now. So unsurprisingly, one of the key things that I talk about in this book is long-term investing, right? Avoid the temptation of day trading, of trying to stock pick, of trying to time the market. Stick with long-term investing. It is the proven approach to financial freedom. Another big aspect that we talk about in this is really about how the financial markets work. Don't invest in what you don't understand 
understand. And so I give you a financial crash course, my four year finance degree in about two chapters. This is your 101 that you must understand about how the financial markets work so you can make them work for you. Lastly, because we are the witch of Wall Street, I added in some woo to this book in the form of subliminals, in the form of tapping and some other techniques to really support you on your journey with your finances, your money, your investing. Because ultimately our relationship with money, it's an emotional relationship. It is not a logical relationship, even though we all wish we could be super logical when it comes to our money. It is very much driven by how we were raised around money, how our beliefs systems were formed around money. So you get a taste of what this very holistic approach to managing your money, manifesting money, making more money, all of it could look like for you. So again, if you wanna go and check out this book, I put a link down in the description. I clearly highly recommend, I am biased, but it is something I'm so proud of. So I hope these books inspire you, educate you, and empower you to really take control of your financial future. If you've read these books or if you have any other favorites that you'd recommend, I would love to hear from you. So drop it in the comments down below. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you liked this video, if you got some value from it, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe so that you're always getting the best of content here from The Witch of Wall Street and maybe even share this with a bestie. You can also get a ton of value from watching this. And before you go, don't forget to check out the links in the description down below that I have mentioned throughout this video. That's all from me. Stay financially savvy and I'll see you in the next video.